Shot fires, suspects down. Hey guys, Mike Lover Actual here. On this episode, we're looking at a video that's already been released. It's, it's made its way through the airwaves of this dude who shows up on the scene of an armed suspect that's down the road, apparently 180 plus yards away, and he just casually gets out and takes out the bad guy. Um, this is a very good metric for looking at what people that take training seriously look like, immersed in stress and how they operate versus people who don't. Often on Reacts, we look at people who don't. We look at people who don't have their stuff together. Stress kind of suppresses all those technical skill sets that they've fallen in love with on the flat range, and then things fall apart. And then the criticism is, hey, how can they become better? What mistakes are they making, and how can we move forward? This is not that. So here we go. Look, my only complaint with the coffee thing is like, one of the things I was thinking about was, if this dude is rolling around and he heard these calls, did he hear about the call before and he was just casually like navigating with his coffee? But hey, um, that's my only complaint about that. As he's navigating this, he casually is getting out likely because he's just setting containment. He might even just be setting up a perimeter where he's trying to keep people um, out of the area, but he's also keeping the bad guy in a box. And he just casually does this. Wait, are those gunshots? I don't think I've heard this part of it because I've seen it and watching it on my cell phone, but I don't think I've heard the audio from this portion of it. But if you listen really closely. <laughs> oh, my God. So there's gunshots, and he's moving at like a snail's pace where slow is smooth, smooth is fast, but sometimes slow is slow. But he's super methodical about it, right? He's not jumping the gun. Uh, no complaints here. But, man, there's gunshots going off, and he's just like, yeah, let me get just get to my bag. So a lot of people have commented about, like, oh, why doesn't he keep one in the uh, chamber? Guys, a lot of the protocol and doctrine for um, police officers' SOPs for keeping carbines in cars. Like, one, he doesn't have the carbine in the car with him because that's an SOP. They, 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 by the department's uh, standards, might have to keep um, their car being in the trunk, uh, obviously away from people, away from getting stolen. And then a lot of them aren't allowed to keep around chambered in the gun. So he doesn't have around chambered. Well, what I will note is that little guy right there. So big shout out to GBRS. Um, that's a GBRS mount. Um, the, whole, the entire point of that mount is to offset both the optic and the infrared laser away from your holding hand, which would be your C-clamp that I would recommend on the, fore, uh, the foregrip of the gun. So that forward rail um, is now not impeding uh, the infrared light because it, it's on a riser. And a beautiful mount, um, uh, a lot of law enforcement agencies and civilians are adopting it. So right here, he's setting up for the, the shot. Um, he's reinforcing his position by taking a um, barricaded, if, if, you get, if you've done anything with Viking tactics or if you have anybody who's trained you around barricades, it's likely from Viking tactics. I think the first time I learned from Kyle Lamb about barricades was like 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Uh, no, 15 years ago, 06, 07 time period. And he's reinforcing his position upgrading his situation 
by getting a more, more stable platform off the side of his rig, which is awesome because he's using that rig as cover and concealment. Uh, I might have taken a, taken a prone position depending on the distance. Uh, he has a red dot. He has a micro T. So whether it's two to three minutes um, in, that, in that dot, um, he's comfortable with setting up the shot. And at 183 yards, most, most guys who have carbines likely are um, part-time SWAT guys. They might be SRT guys, and he's likely has a 50 to 200-yard zero. The last three SWAT teams, Midland SWAT, uh, New Jersey SWAT, and recently Redland SWAT all had 50 200s. Actually, no, I take that back. Um, one of the SWAT teams had a 100-yard zero, and we changed it to a 50, 50 200. But this generally would be point of aim, point of impact. So no hold necessary at 183 yards. So we teach this. Uh, you don't see it really except for the shadowing, the vignetting at the top left of the screen. He's got his left elbow or forearm. Let me not put elbow. Forearm, which is meat, not joints, up against that vehicle pushed. And he has a uh, barricaded position, which means he's probably behind his feet, uh, equal distance apart. His arm or his uh, dominant elbow is relaxed. Um, so he doesn't have all these variable and inputs in this carbine, and that's a pretty stable position. Um, the the alternative to this, uh, from what I could see, would be him taking a knee. Uh, Kyle Lamb would teach you to take your left knee would be on the ground, your right knee would be out, so you could pivot off of that joint to get a little bit more extra distance, and he would do the same. He would take his left forearm and place it on the vehicle. Joints aren't good to put on vehicles because you put a joint, it rolls, and it's a, it's a bone versus the meat, fat, and tissue, the skin, that gives you a little bit more stable, like a shooting sock would be in a, a more stable platform. He also, just of note right there, you can see it, he has a single point sling. I'm not a big fan of single point slings, but it depends on the job. If you're a mobile guy, when I was a mobile guy in, in the GRS staff office, I ran single point slings. They were more convenient for the job. Um, I wasn't doing a lot of CQB running in the houses, but I would always recommend. Uh, I believe that's a GB. John, is that a GBRS sling? It looks like, it. It looks like a GBRS sling. Um, I would run a two point GBRS or Viking Tactics sling uh, for my particular setup. Uh, I, I like the idea of the magazine acting as a monopod on the ground, but he opted out and he got in the fight a lot faster. And no criticism here, just just observations. One shot's all it takes, guys. This guy has an infrared uh, optic on his uh, GBRS mount. He has a micro T, pretty squared away setup. I'm going to speculate here, this guy's a SWAT guy. I'm going to speculate that he's an SRT SWAT guy. He's been training protocols. He's been inoculated in stress. And this is what Wright looks, got, looks like, guys. Big shout out to this officer. Uh, his, his diligence, his training, his attention to detail, and him executing properly. I mean, he just called the, uh, over the radio very calmly, suspect down, no, no need to get amped up. Um, and, man, good kudos to him for taking out an armed suspect. All right, guys, Mike Glover Actual. Hit the subscribe, notification tab, all that good stuff. Leave your comments and reviews to, uh, below. Also, we like to get your feedback for more videos for Reacts. Um, I'm giving you one perspective uh, from my narrow uh, field of experience on these videos, the more the merrier. The more you guys get involved, the better it is for us. Uh, make sure you send us the links to these videos as well. Don't just say, hey, there's this video, this thing that happened. Make sure you send the links. Appreciate you guys. Also follow the Philcraft Survival Channel because we do reacts on that channel as well. Um, and come out and train with us. I'll be uh, November 25th. I will be in San Bernardino, California for the Warriors Heart Foundation dinner. I'll also be doing a couple demos. Um, it's it's a uh, survival seminar in conjunction with Breaking Bread. And the 26th, I'll be teaching Gunfighter Pistol at Route 66 Sports Shooting uh, Park. Uh, also see the links uh, below for all that good stuff. Till next time, peace out, guys.